Carlton Carnivores. Uh, surprisingly, I haven't actually done a video yet on any of the carnivorous plants that I work with, which is one of the uh, major passions that I've got here. So I decided I would start off the uh, videos on the carnivores with uh, the first species that I featured in my blogs on the website, and that is Brachinia reducta. Now, unlike the uh, classic carnivores that most people are familiar with, like the Venus flytrap, these guys, they work in a very different fashion, and they're definitely not what you would think of as carnivorous when you look at them at first glance. So, Brachinia reducta is one of the three species of bromeliads that is considered to be carnivorous, alongside its sister Brachinia hectioides and Catopsis berteroniana. Now, this is one of the larger of the three species, and as you can see, uh, they can actually get even bigger than this. If I were to have these leaves standing upright, it's almost three feet tall. In the wild, where it's where these guys live in uh, Venezuela and surrounding regions on both the uh, Tepuis or Table Mountains, as well as the uh, Gran Sabana savannas, they grow in very very bright, open, sunny areas. So, where they grow, they actually develop not this folding out, uh, spread out. Uh, growth fashion that you see here, but instead uh, they'll actually form all of their leaves into one singular central tube. And so every single leaf will grow straight up inside the previous one. They usually retain kind of a yellowish uh, tone to them in that environment. And then that central tube, which you can see here, is usually filled with rainwater as well as a handful of additives that the plant will actually produce itself. So, in that uh, rainwater is where all the action happens. So, this plant is known to produce a few different uh, insect luring uh, odors at times. And when the insects arrive, either following these interesting odors, it'll sometimes smell kind of like honey, or just looking for a drink or a place to hide, they'll crawl in either between the leaves in ones that are more broad and spread out like this, or they'll go into the main central tube. And once they actually land on the leaves, you probably won't be able to see it at this distance, but the outside of the leaves is covered in this powdery white wax that sloughs off really easily. It'll actually pull off right on your fingers. You can see it a little bit on my finger here. So the insects cannot grip that, so when they land on it, they slide right into the pool of water that's uh, within, and then they can't get out and they drown. Now, most of the bromeliads are traditionally considered what are called uh, pre- or paracarnivorous, in that they have most of the attributes of a true carnivorous plant, but most people don't think of them as having all of the attributes, and that is being able to lure trap and capture prey and then digest it, as well as have an, uh, a visible benefit from it. They have all of those aspects except for, supposedly, um, digesting the prey itself. Now, in the case of at least Burkinia reducta, there has been some evidence that it does produce uh, proteases to, to break down uh, proteins, amino acids, in order to use uh, the various nitrogenous products in there to grow. But otherwise, for all the other nutrients that these plants get from insects, they actually uh, have to rely on bacteria instead. So the bacteria, or sometimes small midge larvae and such that are living here in here, will break down the insects, and then the plant will absorb whatever is left through its leaves. Now, Burkinia is not commonly seen for sale, but every now and then when you find one, uh, it's often a quite sought-after plant because it's it just doesn't quite look like the other carnivores. Uh, most people think of bromeliads when they think of the garden center plants with the bright, colorful uh, flowers coming out the top. Uh, when these guys flower, they actually produce a branched stalk that has all these little tiny kind of yellowish blooms and may or may not, they usually don't, but they sometimes self-pollinate most of the time they require cross-pollination. Now, when they don't produce seeds, what they do instead, and you can just see them in the bottom here, is when a Burkinia starts to uh, reach a fair old age, and you can tell this one is because of how long its stem is above the soil, 
they will actually produce pups at the very base that will start to grow up and replace oftentimes the mother plant. Now in cultivation, if you fertilize the mother plant really well and you remove the pups early on, you may be able to save the mother plant as well as grow on the new pups and be able to propagate it that way. Now, Barkinia is actually a fairly easy species to grow. Um, most of the ones in cultivation likely originate from the lowland grand savannas, so they are a lot more tolerant of fairly warm weather than the ones that would come from the tapuis, the highlands. So these guys can be grown a lot like uh, Nepenthes, tropical pitcher plant, but with uh, somewhat brighter light. These guys will love full sun if you can give it to them. Uh, they grow, you can grow them just in straight sphagnum moss or a sphagnum and perlite or pumice mix. Uh, some people will grow them in a relatively airy peat mix. Keep it just moist. Uh, you always want to keep some water in the central urn, sometimes between the leaves, to help keep this thing uh, nice and uh, hydrated. And once you've got cultivation down, it's relatively easy to take a plant from something that looks like this to this although it may take a year or two for them to reach full size, sometimes more. Good fertilization helps with this, but otherwise it's a very easy plant to grow. So if you guys like videos about different carnivorous plants, whether or not it's interesting, unusual species, or some of the different hybrids that I grow as well, uh, species all across the different genera, or other interesting novelty, unusual plants that you'd like to hear about that I may have, uh, let me know in the comments or uh, visit me on my website, which will be linked down below, as well as uh, time to carve out for these videos is helped with uh, support through my Patreon, which will also be linked below. So uh, give a like and follow, and I'll see you on the next video for Carlton Carnivores.